I can bet I will impress you with the strategy. Imagine, during the attack, we are replacing the king from one flank to another one. Did you see this before? How it can be possible? It's possible. Believe me, stay till to the end of this video to uncover this strategy better. My name is Pavel Martinov, I welcome you to my YouTube channel and let's start. Here is the position from the Vasily Smyslov game. He played white in this situation. It looks like white are having domination on the board. More space, better pieces, the poor pieces of black are staying, just doing nothing, and white are planning to go maybe h5, h6, g6, in some case even f4, so white are controlling this situation 100%. And here Smyslov found a really nice way. Before the final attack, he wants to improve the position of his king, and he's going king g2 in this position. And after g6, is going king f1, amazing strategical idea. The point is that if black will capture on f5, it's not helps, I will take on f here, I'm receiving a nice outpost for my knight on e4, by the way, to learn about the outpost, you can find my video on the channel. So here, black, they don't have any kind of a counterplay. They need to stay on the place like bishop c8, and I can just move on slowly, knight e4, bishop c8, and here also I can do a funny checkmate, like knight f6. So if you will capture with the knight, I will just capture with a pawn. I will unlock my rook and this like completely winning for, for white because black can't prevent the attack. And if king g7, the funny checkmate is h6, the checkmate with the pawn. So even after the takes on uh, f5, it's losing. The idea of king f1 that Smyslow wants to do like this. Using that the black are staying completely passive without chances to the counterplay, we can just improving the position of the king before the final attack. So bishop goes c8 was in the game, h5, just like to have more treats on the king side. If black will try to create any sort of a counterplay like f6, okay, I can just go queen g3 and f6 is forcing additional weaknesses under my attack on the king side. We have this strategical rule, never play on the side where you are weak side. And that is the point why the f6 move is not helping black. They're just unlocking potentially their own king. In the game after h5, black decided to stay in the place like rook b7, rook h2, we're not hurrying up, Rook, rook a7, king e1, rook b7, king d1. Our rook on h2 is very flexible. We can double on this line or on this line whenever we want. Rook a7, king c2, here, king b3, rook a7. And after our king is in a completely safe position, because the queen side is totally closed by the pawn structure, right? There's no attacking or counter-attacking ideas for black. We are starting our own attack, queen g3. So basically, we want to move the f4 to start to unlock the position around the king of black. Rook b7, f4, black should capture, takes, rook a7. Again, it's no way for black, just wait at the punishment. And knight d1. The knight can go to the g4 to increase the attacking chances. So Smyslov are using that black are completely out of the counterplay. And we can do whatever we want in this situation. And it's very nervous for the opponent to stay there. And why black decided to take on the five, it's forcing their lose, doesn't changing the result in general, but still takes on a five. Our pawn are really magnificent. We are looking to f6, g6, h6, everything basically. Knight g7, knight f3, improving the last piece, h6, f6. And in this situation, black decided to resign because I want to capture on h5, on g7, my h file is protected with the rook. So basically, I'm unlocking the king and it's like a matter of time when I will do the checkmate. So a very nice strategy by Vasily Smyslov, transferring the king from the side to side, improving the position of the king before the final attack. Remember this, because it can help you to gain more points in your games. And don't forget to subscribe to my YouTube channel.